Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is Kevin. And in this week's video, I'm thrilled to have joining us Jason Gooley. Uh, Jason's been with Cisco for over nine years. He's a technical evangelist. We'll be talking about what that means. He's uh, the creator and host of Metal DevOps. We'll be checking that out as well. He's written a lot of content for Cisco Press. Jason, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Kevin. It's been a while. It has been uh, at least three years. At least three. At because least. Uh, if uh, nobody can tell, we're actually filming this live at uh, Cisco Live 2022. First time we've been back in person in about three years. And I'm kind of wondering, we were talking about how many times you've been to Cisco Live, like yeah. 13 times, I think you I said. Think something like that, yeah. What are, what are some memories? What are some things that stick out as maybe your best or, or worst <laughs> memories of Cisco Live? Uh, you know, it's kind of funny you say that because one of the first things that happened was at Cisco Live 2013 in Orlando. I was hired on at Cisco to start July 8th, and Cisco Live was happening in June. And I had known nobody, right? Yeah. I had no idea what I was getting myself into, except I've always wanted to go work for Cisco. Yeah. And I walk into the certification lounge the first time as a CCIE because I passed in March 29th. And then I went to Cisco Live in June. And I go into certification lounge, I'm sitting there, and I sit down with like all the free food and chocolate, you know how it is, you're just sitting there, oh, this is yeah. so crazy, you know? And this gentleman comes up, can you mind if I sit with you? I'm like, oh, no, go ahead. You sit down, we're talking for like an hour, you know? What do you want to do next? I'm, you know, I'm thinking about going for my data center CCIE. I just got, you know, route switch. I'm thinking about going for my data center. He's like, you should do your CCDE. And I'm like, CCDE? I, not many, I haven't, that's, a, that's new, isn't it? Or new, you know, start talking to me. Turns out the whole time I'm standing there, it's Russ White. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't even know who. I'm like, I read all his books. I had no idea it was Russ. And it was so funny because then I'm talking to him and then Bo comes up. Yeah. And, and I love Bo. And Bo was just the greatest guy in the world, man. And uh, um, that was probably one of the biggest things because I remember Russ was saying, if you ever decide to go for your DE, you, you call me. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and when you get to Cisco, talk to Denise Fishburne. And I'm like, okay, Denise Fishburne, okay. And that's mm -hmm. where I met Fish. And uh, yeah. I love all of these folks. Uh, they've been nothing but helpful. You have been awesome to me over the years, and it's been great. So that was one of my biggest memories, just getting Cisco Live as a Cisco employee who hasn't started yet. As a fresh CCIE, I was, I was starry-eyed. I well, still, yeah, you, I still am. <laughs> you, you mentioned Russ Watt. That reminds me. He's one of what, like twelve? Uh, what is it? The uh, the certified solutions architect, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I called. think he was like the first or second. Yeah, and he wrote the DE too. So it's yeah. like that's. So and you, I had no idea what I was doing. So are, are you going to go for the architect level? Uh, you know, I was going for the DE. I took it three times. I got really close. But every time I took it, we tried to have kids, and then I ended up having kids. And yeah. So I, I did learn a tremendous amount. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and in the process to that, I went through the service provider, and I ended up with that. But. Gotcha. I, and what, like I've told a lot of people that, that don't pass that CCIE attempt, it's not wasted time. No. I, I, came, I failed my first CCIE twice before ever passing it, and at the end of two failures, I was a much, much better engineer than I was before. So it, it was totally helpful. Now, now, let's go back to that title you have of a technical evangelist. Yes. I don't know many technical evangelists. Uh, what, what is that? <laughs> uh, it is so cool because so I work for Worldwide EN Sales and Software Sales. So it's a long, long word, but uh, I get to talk about all our enterprise networking technology. Mm -hmm. So I meet with customers all over the world. We do things like test drives where we can have customers get hands on with Capture the Flag that we're running over here. Mm -hmm. Check out Capture the Flag at Cisco Live if you haven't. It's super cool. And it's gamification of all of our demos. Mm -hmm. And you can do interactive test drives where you're having conversations with the customers and things like that. And I also build all the training content and curriculum for our field and our partners. Hey, let me interrupt your training video really quickly to let you know how you can get module one in its entirety of any of these courses you see on screen for free. Just visit the link, sign up, and you can taste test any of these courses or really all of these courses. All right, back to the video. I know that uh, you've talked a lot about uh, design stuff. I know I've got some of your books and it's it's heavy into network programmability. You talk about Python, you go into SD-WAN, SD-Access, SDN, all that stuff. And if somebody's looking at all the dis different Cisco certifications, they can say, I want to be an enterprise person or I want to go down collaboration or security. And they could take the same approach toward uh, DevNet. Sure. Do you think DevNet is just another track they could go down? Or do you think that everybody needs some DevNet in their laps. <laughs> I'm going to go with the latter on that. Yeah. And, and, and what's interesting is I have a lot of folks come up to me, how should I get started? What should I do? Should I yeah. go CCNA? Should I go DevNet? Mm -hmm. My opinion is this. Um, if you have background in networking mm -hmm. already, mm -hmm. right, go for your CCNA, right? If you don't, it's probably even better to start looking at the DevNet. And the reason, reason I'm bringing that up mm -hmm. is the DevNet associate is 80-20, so 80% programmability type stuff, 20% network fundamentals. So it gives you a really good idea of what you need to know to apply it to a network without killing the, the network 
you know, capacity or, or all the different stuff you're right, talking about from right. a network track, I should say. Mm -hmm. The CCNA is the reverse. So you have 80% network fundamentals and 20% programmability. Mm -hmm. My opinion is if you can do either one of those first, you'll be in great shape, but you should probably do both of them. Mm, okay. And you don't necessarily have to go professional. You don't have to get the core and go through all these different things. We're now even the experts out now. But I think just understanding that level of what you can do with it yeah, and applying yeah. it is huge. Yeah, just being conversant in it so you can That's talk it. to the DevNet professionals that you're exactly. working with. Exactly. Yeah. Now, since you do go so deep into the DevNet world, I know a lot of people call you, what is it, the godfather of DevNet? The godfather of programmability. Uh, the godfather yeah. of programmability. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's so funny because they created this, uh, you know, this was, I don't know, like five, six years ago now, maybe even yeah, about five or six years ago. I was fortunate in that I was able to write the first programmability book for Cisco. Mm -hmm. And then that was right when APIC EM was out. We were starting to do the different things with the technology and specialist exam for program programmability. Mm -hmm. So they adopted the book as the book for all of that. And mm -hmm. then obviously DevNet promoted it and we promoted DevNet back and forth. And it was just an amazing partnership. And it just kept growing. And now it's kind of to the point where it's it's like so big and so vast that it's taken up such a big area in this. We have so many developers. It's It's pretty cool. And I've got that book, by the way. It's great. I it's love awesome. that book. And I recommend it to my students when I'm teaching that kind of stuff. I like hold it up to the camera and say, you know, you got to get this book. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but um, since you do know so much about, you go so deep in that track, what do you see on the horizon? What's next in the world of, uh, of network programmability? What's coming out? You know, what's interesting is that I get asked that question a lot. And it, I think, in my opinion, is like everybody's right now trying to figure out the security aspect of a lot of things, right? Mm. But at the same time, they're also trying to figure out how do I make this easier so I don't have to do such manual work or manual labor, sure. upgrade all these sites at the same time, etc. And I'm I'm seeing almost two separate things, right? Folks going, I want my job to be easier from an operational perspective. Let's let's automate some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I'm seeing how do I tie all these systems together with APIs so I know if something happens that. I know where it happened, when it happened, how it happened, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm seeing like almost two different thought processes because a lot of folks are in security, but if they're not following that, they're going the other way. Mm -hmm. And I think eventually what will happen is it'll split and then kind of converge, you're going to end up doing both anyway. Um, and I think the automation aspect of it is, is key, but also understanding what value you can get out of tying different systems together for yourself. Yeah. Like if you're an engineer and you're looking at this system because something went down, then you have to go log into this thing and look at that, and you're logging into this, and then your, your CIO comes up and says, I need nine reports on all this, and you're logging all these different systems. Wouldn't it be nice to just be able to tie all that together? Like, here's everything. Oh, yeah. So it's it's the ease of use, I think, is coming out of that as well, which make it pretty pretty fantastic uh, change of pace from what we were doing for the last 30 years, I tell you. And uh, just walking around here, the uh, the World of Solutions floor at Cisco Live, I see it everywhere because I always go over to the collaboration area. I'm, yeah, I, I'm, yeah. I'm big into collaboration and I go, oh, they're doing a presentation on something with the uh, communications manager. And I look up there and they're writing a Python program to go talk to the communications manager. Right. It's not even it's not even CCM anymore. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I'm writing a Python script to go and do this for me, you know? Yeah. And I thought, Okay, that's fun. Let's go over here to this other area. And they were they had a demonstration on uh, iOS XR configuration. I thought, oh, I've been doing iOS since 89. What's yeah. it? They were doing like REST comp stuff. Okay. <laughs> so it's it's everywhere. To totally different. So, too, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But what I tell my students is I think everybody needs to be, like we said, conversant in the DevNet world. Know a little bit of Python. Be able to talk about it Absolutely. Little, at least. Now, just jumping gears just a little bit, I know you talk a lot about uh, is it a podcast? Is it a YouTube channel? But you talk about uh, Metal DevOps. Yes. What is Metal DevOps exactly? So it, that was actually born out of a complete fluke, and uh, it's turned out to be so amazing, and I love it. So what happened is, I was in, I believe it was Barcelona, and David Bomble comes up and mm -hmm. wants to interview me. I'm like, okay, and, and he's like, okay, well, blah blah blah. Where's your YouTube channel and your, you know, your blog and all this? Yeah. I'm like, well, I, I don't, I don't have one. Yeah, and. And he's like, oh, well, if you were to have one, what would it be about? And I'm like, metal music and technology. It just <laughs> came out of nowhere. Yeah. And, and I was like, wow. He's like, oh, well, we very much look forward to seeing it then. <laughs> and that was the end of it. I'm like, wait a minute. Do, do I got to do something with that now? I got I to do something? And I just, I love metal music so much. I love everything. But I'm a big metal head. And I love technology. I'm like, dude, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do something with it. So I started doing this thing where the idea was metal music, engineers, developers who play, stuff like that, doing mm -hmm. stuff like that. That was the concept. And I've been fortunate that I, I happen to do a lot in the music 
industry with a lot of these big bands and stuff. Just yeah, because you, you know the guy I, in, uh, in uh, who is it? Um, I forgot the name. There's one band you know really well. What is it? Uh, uh, I've been doing a lot of stuff with Megadeth lately. Yeah, that's what yeah. it was, Megadeth. Yeah, yeah, which is super cool. I've been helping them run their VIP meet and greets and stuff like that. Super. And, uh, you know, getting off tour with them and Lamb of God and all these, these folks has been fun. Um, but then it turned into I'm interviewing half of them. Yeah. And about how technology is prevalent in their world. That's awesome. Like, how do you how do you use wireless in your on, on a state? Totally different ball game, right? And all oh, these yeah. different things. And it, it was just all been them. So now, like, I've got to I got to pull it back and, and get some developers in there too who listen to music and do that. And uh, it's just been crazy. It just it came out of nowhere and took on a life of its own, and mm -hmm. it's been so fun. That is so cool. So it's a YouTube channel, I guess, and and a podcast. So. Okay. Uh, where, where can we find it? Uh, MetalDevOps.com or on all YouTube channels at MetalDevOps or all social media handles. Mm -hmm. so. uh, and to kind of wrap things up, I know there's a lot of uh, pin-up demand to come to Cisco Live because it's yeah. been virtual for two years. So I'm sure there's a lot of first-time attendees here. Oh, yeah. And uh, Next year, there will probably be even more because I think they, they capped the, uh, the attendance this year, if I heard yeah. correctly. So what's your advice for somebody coming maybe next year for the first time? What, what are a couple of things that they should definitely do and what should they avoid maybe? I would say one thing, you have to check out Capture the Flag because it, it's, just, it's really cool how they gamify all the different technology and demos. Mm -hmm. And it's not just enterprise networking, it's, it's everything. Security, mm -hmm. it's got some really cool stuff. DevNet Zone obviously is huge. The, the social media hub, these, these folks are amazing mm -hmm. at directing you and different things and getting you engaged with different platforms. The Cisco Champions are huge. you got to mm -hmm. check out Cisco Champions. Uh, and then finally, I would say go to the certification lounge, go to learning at Cisco, start looking at some of the different things that you might be interested in studying for, right? I mean, that's huge. And then obviously, we're sitting here in a world of solutions, which I equivalent to the auto show of networking, right? Yeah. Just walk around talk to folks. The biggest thing about Cisco Live is that it's live and you can meet different people doing mm -hmm. different things and I think that's the biggest thing. Relationships. Love it. Yep. Jason, thank you a ton for joining us today. Really thank appreciate you. it. Always a pleasure, my friend. So good. All right. Hey, thanks everyone. We'll see you next week.